Uh, it's blank. Okay, so let's get started. Um, so my name is Carlos Santana. I have a passion for playing the guitar in downtown Raleigh in jazz clubs, and I love to talk about Kubernetes and tech. And only one thing of those two is true. Um, I'm a solutions architect at AWS. Uh, my job role is a uh, Kubernetes specialist, and what I do there is work with a lot of um, customers in the field. I'm kind of like the, uh, also work with Nirma in the same team. We are the right hand of the ECAS service, working with customers on how they use the service, how, what are the things that they're building. And I joined AWS about almost two years ago. I've been in the industry for a while, uh, doing distributed systems and, um, and other things. And I've been living here in Raleigh for the last 22 years. Um, 20 of those I did in RTP. I did 20 in RTP. Uh, I don't know who works at RTP. Anyone? Anyone outside uh, from Raleigh who travel uh, out of state? Yeah, I know some folks. So thank you for visiting us here in Raleigh. Uh, I've been living here uh, for the last 22 years and it's been a great city to be in, a family, to raise a family. I think that's one of the best things. And my daughter is across the street in NC State right now, so I think I'm dating myself. So let's get started. Um, this talk is about platform engineering. Uh, I don't know if people have heard about it recently. Um, and the standardization uh, 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 autonomy of that. And just to start with a little bit of Jane AI, um, I asked the Jane AI chat of like, bring me a picture of the balance of autonomy versus standardization. So it came up with something like this with the Raleigh uh, skyscrapes uh, city on the back. Um, so those are the type of things that you can do with Jane AI. You can generate images. And this was kind of like, a fun thing that I, I thought was like a standardization means like the platform team is trying to build a platform where the developer, maybe this is the developer, that is going to get from one end, he has his code to the other end, which is his code in production. And he always was mentioning that uh, things were very slow, that there was a lot of gates, that he couldn't get to the other side. So the platform team built this. Like, here you go, autonomy. Now you have autonomy. How fast are you going to get to the other end. So maybe that's not the way that the developer thought about uh, autonomy. So before that, uh, a couple of questions. Um, who is here a platform, consider yourself a platform engineer? Okay, we have a couple. And what about a DevOps engineer or SRE? No laughs. There's no such thing as a DevOps engineer. Uh, DevOps is a core show, right? Uh, you're not an engineer of a core show, you're an engineer of maybe a, the cloud or some tooling or engineer of the platform. Um, and then who's here uh, has the role of like defining the strategy about platform engineering in your org? Like you're a leader of driving that uh, for the organization. Like you're like, we need, I need to figure out like what this means, what is the strategy and what should we all be working on? So if you are like that, uh, probably you are in an organization that it has enough people that you have teams, and teams working on different applications. And applications can be microservices for web apps, it could be um, uh, financial services, but also lately there's a lot of um, uh, machine learning, artificial intelligence workloads. Uh, some of them are for training models, and other ones are for inferring, so you have to think about like the different type of applications you'll be working on for, uh, for those teams to, to work on. And the, the last one is um, this topic, since I work for a cloud provider, is, and I, this is the talk to give you insights of what we have seen working with customers on infrastructure. Um, choosing like uh, a compute, uh, for example, Kubernetes is a great compute engine uh, choice to run some, some workloads. And we have other, other data uh, uh, services like S3 for objects uh, storage and, and databases. So you have to decide what are the services you're going to use, how do you deploy them, how do you deploy them in an efficient way. So let's look at, um, at infrastructure management, kind of like that's the 
area where platform engineering teams are concentrating on of like how do we manage infrastructure for the for the different teams and and an application and it's a spectrum it's not like uh, one answer fits all it's a spectrum where you can start with uh, a decentralized um, aspect of giving autonomy to those things of saying you get an, a, a, an account in, a, in the cloud provider and it's up to you to decide how do you use it, how do you use it efficiently, manage the bill, figure out how to do security. And you may have people that have those skills. On the other end of the spectrum, you have a centralized uh, way of doing infrastructure where you're maybe more mature and you have learnings from uh, maybe a couple of years of working on the cloud where you have like optimizing the infrastructure that you're provisioning, either for cost or security or efficiencies. So it's a spectrum. So you as a leader, we're talking about the leader, you need to decide what is that going to be the model for what type of application and teams that we have. Are we going to give them a set decentralized, everybody gets uh, their own account or their own cluster, maybe their own namespace. So that's a different level of um, this, the segregation that you can have or isolation. So let's take a look at, at a metaphor. So uh, this is a good metaphor because it talks about like there's certain people that have the skills maybe to take the parts of an engine and put it in together. Definitely not me. I'm, I work with software um, and put it together into an engine. And those people are good at what they do. They do it every day. They work in the workshop um, doing those type of things. Like they they know how to build an engine. They love how to do that. They're good at it, they do it for certain reasons, but the majority of the, the number of people, they want a car. They just want an engine, they just want a car. So we have to think about like in the, in the scale of the people in your organization. Do you have a lot of people that know all these building blocks and how to put them together? Or do you have a lot of people that just want to get something accomplished and they just want a car to get from point A to point B? So here are some customer examples. Um, I, in the last, since I joined AWS, I've been working with, in this space of platform engineering. Um, and let's look at some of the examples that uh, people are using Kubernetes, in this case, EKS. So the New York Times has a platform, an internal developer platform, that they, they built on top of EKS and AWS. And some of the tools that they use is, like for example, Terraform to create uh, AWS accounts. And the way they do that is through a portal uh, which I'll be talking a little bit later, uh, an open source project called Backstage, where folks can go log in and request for, to create a new project. And each project will get a new AWS account. Um, then later, they have that project may have different teams or different apps, and they can they choose to have. So that may be a, 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 an example of the centralized um, segregation. And then the other aspect is they have uh, a Kubernetes cluster. So we'll deploy a Kubernetes cluster, and they decide to do multi-tenancy, to have the different teams using that, uh, that cluster. And they have automation around it. They use things like GitOps uh, in Kubernetes and onboarding to this uh, backstage. And they have created their own platform CLI. So that's the thing. Platform engineering is creating abstractions that your teams can use. and you. You can take things from open source, you can take things from a vendor, but at the end of the day, you're creating a unique experience for your internal teams uh, to accelerate and meet them where they are. So that was a cool project. Um, they gave a talk in, in Rimbend and also they gave a talk in, in KubeCon. Another one that I was more familiar with was NASA. And NASA was building a, a data scientist uh, platform to, create, to use tools like JupyterHub, Dask, um, and S3 for data scientists to do their job um, uh, uh, of, of um, creating, creating models and also using models. And the, uh, we worked with them to, for the infrastructure. It was taking them so long to create the platform and create this um, open source studio that they, we worked together on looking at how to automate this and we decided to use Kubernetes as the API to do this with the work of automation of Kubernetes on EKS, uh, GitOps, they were able to build a platform 
the data scientists didn't know anything about, and they don't have to know anything about Git uh, or software development. They, what they want is to click a button and get a Jupyter Hub uh, notebook where that's where their program is located. The next one is um, the benefits. So I think I thought a little bit about the benefits of having an internal uh, platform is velocity. So if you have projects that are getting stuck uh, or, ex or experiments or new ideas to create more revenue in your company, uh, velocity is one of the benefits that you get as an internal platform. So those teams don't have to uh, know how to provision the infrastructure around the applications. The next one is governance. Uh, some companies are regulated. Uh, so for compliance reasons, these companies will have uh, some guardrails and policy enforcement to do this, and they want to do it in a consistent way, and they want to make sure that every workload in production follows that governance uh, to meet the regulated uh, industry where they deploy workloads. The other one is uh, efficiency. Efficiency, this one is more about cost, and with the recent um, uh, events around the world in the last couple of years, companies have looked for ways of reducing cost and maximizing utilization. So um, looking for um, those efficiencies are kind of like the focus of cost optimization on the cloud is one of the areas where platform engineer is focused on to maximize the, the usage of their cloud resources. So let's, the, let's, the, let's get the battle begin. So we have our platform builders, which they're trying to build standards, and then we have our developers, which one, um, and data scientists. Um, this is another thing that uh, we discovered was not, developers are not looking for, are not only the consumers of these internal platforms in companies, um, is also data scientists. So we have standards and autonomy, and, um, and the idea is that you want to have standards for that uh, consistency uh, and speed, and then autonomy for a developer to not have gates, but build guardrails. And that's kind of the curve where, that's what I was saying about the, the spectrum is autonomy versus standardization. So the platform team wants to build standards, um, but build it in a way that are guardrails, not gates, and then but the developers and the data scientists just want to get their work done. They're like looking for the path of less resistance to get what they want. So what are the challenges? So the challenges are like the level of uh, abstractions that you provide. So if you create an abstraction that is too tight um, and don't have like an escape hatch, uh, there might be situations where the developer needs access to something, for example, logs or metrics. So you need to think about like different levels of abstractions where they can get that information. Also adoption. Adoption is one of the areas that is the first ones that we discover that the most successful teams that build internal platforms are the ones that has the best documentation and knowledge uh, sharing. Uh, they do kind of like office, office hours for the developers to teach them about the platform, about the interfaces and abstractions that they're doing, and also good documentation where the developers can just find the documentation or something like Gen, Gen AI that can crawl through their either wiki or portal to find the answers that they're looking for. And those are the teams that are more successful in adoption because there's no, there's no platform if you don't have users consuming it. And that's the mindset that internal uh, developer platforms uh, for people that are building it have to have is you have a consumer, so you need to treat it as a product. And I think about, uh, about troubleshooting. When there's time to troubleshoot your maybe Java application or Node.js application, how, what do you provide there as an interface for the developer to get access to it? Um, and then isolation. So isolation, it could be something about the autonomy. So the developer may be asking, I want isolation because I want our application to be on a single computer or server or instance and not be running with another, another program that may affect the performance of mine. So that could be a node isolation, but uh, also could be your own cluster. Uh, some teams want their own cluster, but at the same time, you get, uh, they get more expensive because they cannot maximize the utilization of those uh, machines. Um, and then platforms design patterns. So um, here who's uh, doing some type of um, 
this as a service, like namespace as a service, some of them, uh, cluster as a service, okay, a couple, everybody gets a cluster, uh, account as a service, and template as a service. This one comes a lot when I talk to teams uh, that are uh, named platform engineers and ask them, what, what type of interfaces do you provide when you are deploying, in this case, we're, we're talking a lot about Kubernetes, is uh, templates. So what they do sometimes is they are in charge of the templates, like for example, something like Terraform. They will give it to developers as a service, like they can clone it, and it's up to the developer to figure out how to use Terraform and maintain it. That's not really a template as a service if you don't have it centralized in a way that you can consistently update those templates to make sure that the developer just like puts the inputs and then gets what they want. Um, building um, a platform in a, with Kubernetes in practice. So this is kind of a reference implementation that have, we have done with many customers. Uh, uh, for example, the, this looks similar to the one of, that I did with NASA. Um, that you have a Kubernetes cluster where it's your management cluster. So this is a cluster that is um, in charge of like managing other clusters. You can also start with, a, with the same cluster that is running the workloads. But you have something like Git, where the developers who have like their code, uh, they will have backstage where they say, I want to deploy an app that maybe has a database or an S3 bucket. Um, they will put that into Git, then Argo CD would like reconcile that and use something like uh, Crossplane or uh, we have an AWS ACK, uh, AWS uh, controllers for Kubernetes, and that reconciles the, uh, the infrastructure. And that way the, the app and the dependencies are, are deployed together and also in a way that you can have like in the cluster with Kubernetes resources, policies enforcement. So something like OPA on Kiverno. Um, and my final of Kiverno is uh, was built for Kubernetes so that the language is a little bit better than, than OPA, but both work the same way. And the idea is to uh, deploy those resources and it could be that you're deploying other EKS clusters, all the Kubernetes clusters, so it can be a way of provisioning like your multi-cluster uh, multi architectures. So let's switch into uh, a project that I've been, uh, we launched uh, last year with some companies. Um, it's around uh, uh, building a distribution of an IDP. So uh, let's take a look at of a Linux distro. So what is a Linux distro? A Linux distro is an operating system made of software collections. It's based on a Linux kernel. So you can have different, um, for the while, people have picked a Linux distribution and they know what they get to, uh, that, what they can get. It comes with a package management. It could be YUM or it could be apt-get. But you can install the same packages in different Linux distro, but everything is around the Linux kernel. What we're trying to do is, with internal developer platform, is build the same thing. A developer platform made, made of software collections, like if you want to build an IDP, what are those packages that you want to include that is easy to build, build in and deploy by anywhere? And uh, what we think is Kubernetes APIs is the best way of doing that. So Kubernetes is what this IDP is going to base, uh, be based on, and the package system is based on, on GitHub. So that's kind of the patterns that we're looking at. So we created a project, uh, you can look it up online, it's canoe.io. So canoe is an internal developer platform, which is a distribution of open, um, in the open collab, uh, collaboration with different communities um, of companies that they want to build a reference implementation on how to do internal developer platforms. So if you're looking for help or guidance or best practices, then we talk about best practices instead of like uh, uh, spending a lot of time choosing which technologies do we build the, inter the IDP on. So let me see what we have here. So I'll point, pinpoint two, one, two of the packages that we have in this um, IDP distribution called Canoe. And one is Backstage. So Backstage is a CNCF project that you can have plugins um, and developer practices built into it, where you can have a catalog of all your assets, meaning like all the cloud resources plus your applications, and also the, the documentation in a single portal that you can also, that you can find the information of who's the owner of which application, find the docs in a single place, 
So that's, people have been building this kind of portals for a while, but there's not been a open source. So this is a project that uh, Spotify uh, started and we are adopting in Canoe. Um, and there's a blog post that talks about that. The second one that is kind of one of the building blocks is the uh, Argo CD. Argo CD is a GitHub system that works in Kubernetes and the GitHub bridge is a way, a pattern to uh, deploy Argo applications in a consistent way across multiple clusters. Um, and the, the, the merging or like the collaboration between infrastructure as go, things like Pulumi, Rustpling, and Terraform, and Argo CD, how do you deploy them in a way that you maximize the usage of, of Argo CD? And the last one is um, IDP Builder, uh, which is a, uh, who have used, um, well, who have, uh, have worked with Kind or Minikube in their laptops, or maybe a Linux VM. So this is uh, similar of this. This is kind of a, like a kind cluster that we develop a CLI. Uh, well, not really meaning like Autodesk is one of the companies uh, behind this project. They build the CLI in a way that they can reproduce that IDP in the laptop or a Linux system to do CICD in a way that you can take that distribution of an IDP in a folder, give it to somebody else and say, run this one line uh, command line, and it will bring up everything from backstage, cross plane, your your uh, all the packages that are installed, even including a Git server to accelerate for platform engineers how they do development. So we always talk about like the dev cycle of the developer of like I write code and I want to see the instant result of it. Uh, so this tool is for the same concept of I want to update a uh, our language of Kubernetes is YAML. So I want, I want to update the YAML. I don't want to do git add. I don't want to do git commit. I don't want to do sync. I just want to update the file. The file gets watched and it automatically gets updated into your IDP. So you're constantly up, um, doing dev cycle as a platform engineer. Um, I'll show a demo of that in a second. I think, yeah, let's just do a demo. I think uh, I'm using my phone. Uh, because the Wi-Fi here was um, blocking me. So um, I have the, the tool and then this thing locked off. Let's see, we can go in. And I'm running, uh, I can, you can run it in your laptop. It's a, oh, I'm not sharing. Let me see. Probably on the Display, mirror, and let's see if, this thing comes up, it should be connected to my phone. And we tested this a minute ago. There we go. Um, so this is a CLI that, that you, you will run. Um, I'll show kind of recommend here. Um, I always have a hack uh, folder. Who has a hack folder in every Git repo they use? I, that's where I put my scripts. Um, so I have a run local, like if I'm running this on my computer, um, it will look like this, like IDP builder create, um, and then the package directory, or if I'm running this in a, in a Linux VM, uh, I will run IDP builder create, um, and it will give me, uh, and I will pass like a, the, the, the host and port that I'm using, but it's the same package, the same folder, and I can get the same experience on the web or in my laptop and the idea is that this will come up with um, Backstage. Uh, this is Backstage. Who have seen uh, Backstage demo before? Okay. So the idea is like you will run this command and this command will deploy a bunch of things. I think yeah, I did the namespaces here. We'll deploy Argo, Backstage, or Manager. In this case, we're using Crossplane, External Secrets, Ingress, and these are not kubectl YAML or YAML files. This is Argo CD and a Git server being installed in a kind cluster, and then Argo CD constantly like deploying these um, packages uh, on top of it. And then you run it, um, and the idea is to run in a CICD, CICD model that if you change something in your platform, how do you test it? You want to put it into your uh, CICD pipeline. So this is like the components that you get uh, in Backstage. Um, these are the apps that have been deploying, like uh, demo test, demo test two. Um, 
and then you have your APIs, your docs, um, and everything is, is up and running, everything hooked together. And uh, let me show you another example. I have it run it in my laptop here uh, with a little experiment that I've been doing. Let me see if this works. So, um, so this is a plugin. You can do plugins in Backstage. And this is a plugin that I'm doing with Amazon Q. Amazon Q is a um, Gen AI a API. Uh, it's similar, it's a, uh, the branding around like Code Whisper and all those aspects. But you can ask questions in here. And these are the type of things that you can do in your, in your industry where you, if you have this uh, portal for your developer and it's internal, then you can have this experience here, but also control and have guardrails. Like yes, you can use Gen, Gen, uh, Gen AI to generate some code or find who's using the which code or you can ask questions. So let me, um, I think I asked a question like this, like if provide me, I'll copy paste so my mistake, provide a Node.js app that listens on port 3000 and responds while with hello on a get, on a get request. Let me see if this uh, is connected. And it will come back uh, with the code. And this is some code that you can like, um, we're trying to experiment in the Canoe project of like what could be an experience with this. Another thing that you can ask is uh, give me a, the same thing, right, and say that um, access that responds um, with the content, if I can spell, content of a S3 bucket, for example, uh, like a file. Um, and you can do Go or Java or whatever. These are kind of type of things that you can do as a developer to get that. And then from here, maybe you can click a button. So here has uh, the example of uh, how to import the AWS SDK, access S3, uh, read the bucket information, and respond uh, with, that, with that data, uh, right? Um, but now the developer needs to deploy kind of a, I need to, if I want to deploy this in Kubernetes, I will need to create a repo connected to Argo, uh, create the S3 bucket and all those things. So the idea was with Canoe is then you build your IDP. So let's go back to my IDP that was running live. And what I can do here is build templates. And here I have a template, for example, Go, that I can say, I want to build a Go app with an AWS resource. And this AWS resource could be anything. It could be the S3 bucket that we did, or a database. In this case, we'll do an S3. So we'll do demo test, I think I did four. Um, then hit next. And then this is the object storage that I want to do. So when I delete the, the YAML or from my Git repo, do I want the bucket to be removed or I want it to be orphaned? Then the region, if the developer needs to have this information and then provide its default. Uh, in this case, I'm using Terraform, but you can also use like ACK to deploy this. And then you click uh, create and it will go through the process of uh, creating a Git repo, putting a skeleton uh, app in that repo, uh, create an Argo app, connect the Argo app to it, um, and then register into Backstage. So it becomes part of the catalog. So now I have demo test four, I have the Argo CD overview where I can click on it. It says it syncs, it's healthy. Um, this is the, the repo and then I can click on Argo CD and I can see the app being deployed. There's the pods that will access and then the bucket that is here. Um, and if I want to see the code, I can click here on the Git URL and this is the, the internal Git server. So me as a platform engineer, these are my tools and my stack that I can like go um, and work on it um, and iterate faster than me trying to figure out how to do this on the cloud or another cluster. And then I can package this and this becomes my IDP that then I can deploy into a managed cluster. And, and using something like GitLab or Git server. So Git T here is kind of like for you to prove out that your patterns and your templates are correct in what it took minutes. Um, so the last thing that I wanted to show and then in your Go program, you will put that sample application or take it from the template. Um, oh, um, and the bucket. Let me see if we can see the bucket so we can make it sure that it's uh, there. So this is the, the bucketing. is a YAML resource that represents a bucket. So the bucket was created in the cloud. 
uh, if I get the name in here, I can go to S3, and this is very small. Let me refresh. I should see demo four. So this is this is my bucket. Demo worked. Nobody claps. <laughs> On my phone. Fine, fine. You you jerks. Um, so I think uh, we're running out of time, but uh, let's summarize uh, what we have learned. So best practices. I know I went very quick. Uh, but if you want to talk more, I'll be here for, for a little while. Or if not, reach out to me um, in LinkedIn, for example. So uh, just to capture just a few, a few items, like build with your customers. If you're building an internal developer platform and you're having a meeting today and you look around in that meeting and there's no developer in that meeting, you have a problem because you're building without the consumer. So always build with that consumer of uh, today as a product. So that's one of the lessons learned. The other one is Education and documentation are key. You can build the best IDP in your organization, but if you don't have good documentation, or maybe you don't take advantage of Gen AI to make that documentation uh, uh, be easy to be found by asking questions to a chatbot like I showed, or asking like, who was the last person that deployed a Go application with an S3 and a database? So it can come back and create you a template out of that code. And then also education of doing office hours. Uh, don't build a new platform, please. Extend what you have. Start small. Don't build the ocean. That's kind of what the rules that we tell customers is do not create a new platform. Don't tell anyone in your organization you're building a new platform. Just tell them you're extending the experience that you have today. Extending it, making it take a one small application or one workload and get it to production all the way with one ADP. The, the one that I mentioned earlier was provide escape hatches. It might be that something cannot be done through here, so if there's something that it cannot be done today with the backstage, people can go to Git and can go to Argo, and that could be the interface that they, they can do as escape hatch um, and, or, or kubectl if they need access. And then uh, one site doesn't fit all, all workloads. We have workloads for training machine models, microservices, batch, um, so you have to build experience for the workload, but also for the users. So it's a combination. And uh, that's it. This is a survey. In the survey, there will be a link to the repo, and the repo will have the links to all the resources and reach out to me in the in social media or uh, um, here or uh, yeah on LinkedIn. You can reach me there. I think that's it. Awesome. Thank you, Carlos.